Hello, I am Seth Landau, I am 18, so clearly I am here to talk to you about how much I hate doing my taxes. <laughs> All I know about taxes is that my dad goes in to do them, comes out hours later angry and with significantly less faith in God. <laughs> but I actually think it's kind of interesting that the theme is death and taxes, because in a way, death is sort of the ultimate tax. It's really the price we pay for living is eventually we all have to go away somewhere. And my first experience with death came with my grandmother. And I remember I was playing. My dad comes in and he says, Seth, your grandmother's in the hospital. And I say, is she dead? And he said, sort of. <laughs> sort of. So I asked him to explain. And he tells me that she's in a coma or something of a vegetative state. Now I'm five. I hear vegetative state and I think to myself, my grandmother is a carrot. Awesome. <laughs> now I'm not a person who has a lot of regrets in life, but I find that most of my regrets from my childhood come from dealing with the death of my grandmother. Let me give you an example. When she comes out of her coma, we all go and visit her at the hospital. And she's asleep, but in front of her is a tray of food. There is nasty hospital chicken, nasty hospital carrots, and a brand new pudding cup. And I say, wow, that looks really good. So when no one's looking, I take that pudding cup and I eat it. I stole a pudding cup from a sick, old, hospitalized, bedridden grandmother, and it was delicious. <laughs> but the whole car ride, I just felt terrible. I didn't know how to deal with it or cope with it in my mind. So the next time I went to visit my grandmother, in my hand, the whole time I held a small pudding cup. When I got there, I placed it next to her bed. I felt like a bit better of a person for that. Now the next faux pas I suppose I had in dealing with my grandmother's death was when she had actually passed away a few weeks after I'd visited her in the hospital and I was on the way to the funeral. Now on the way to the funeral was the first and only time to this point that I've ever been in a limousine. So I'm five, I'm dancing in a limo, pretending to be a Power Ranger next to four crying people. But I wasn't crying because Power Rangers don't cry. <laughs> so we get to the funeral, and there's gravestones everywhere. I had never been in a cemetery. And my creative little mind thought that looked like a pretty cool climbing structure. So I go, and the whole funeral, I'm climbing all over all the tombstones. And while my grandma's giving a eulogy, I'm on her to well, sorry, while they're giving the eulogy about my grandmother, I am on her tombstone pretending to be a dragon. And when my mom tells me to get off, I say, no, I'm a dragon. And to this day, I wonder why I couldn't just stand still and listen. And I guess that's one of the worst things about death, because more often than not, it makes you think about the regrets you have and the bad times you had with a person. And so, as corny as it may sound, I urge everyone, including myself, to try and remember the good times you have with somebody. Because in the end, it's all you're going to remember. <laughs> you know, eventually the bad times will go away and they're past. But if you can remember the good times, you can move forward. And more than anything, please do not try to be a dragon on the tombstone of your dead grandmother. Thank you. Thank you for reminding me that. So we have, do we, are we still on two new? I think we're still on two new, right? Yes, you are. Okay. okay, so Bob Reiser, you're up next. Okay. So the first time I ever experienced somebody trying to kill me, I mean, and not a near-death experience, but somebody actually with the ability and the intent to end my life was March 22nd, 2003. And uh, so there I was, I was working, just cruising along, doing my job, and I see this orange streak flash across in front of me. And uh, I hear this sound, this boom, you know, it, it's this echoing, resounding boom. Kind of the more the sound that you feel in your chest and the soft tissues of your body, more so than you hear in your ears. And I realize that somebody's trying to kill me. And I guess I should say that the setting for this experience is in Iraq, the city of Asamoah, uh, during the invasion. 
And uh, my vehicle of choice while I was working was a helicopter. I was flying a, on an armed reconnaissance helicopter. So I'm there, and uh, my first experience in combat, and somebody's trying to kill me. And I realized that, and I tell this story later, and people look at me like I've got a third eye growing out of my forehead, that the most exhilarating experience you can possibly ever imagine is when somebody's trying to kill you and they fail. And, uh, and so I realized this, and, and at the time, my first initial reaction, and, and you have to pardon my French, was, uh, you motherfucker, how dare you? You know, there was no fear, there was no like, oh my god, there's somebody trying to kill me. It's like, how dare you? So, needless to say, the instinct kicks in. I'm like, all right, well, this is a dangerous place. I'm going to move. I'm going to go over there, you know, because I was over there. I was fine. I come over here. Somebody shoots at me. So I'm going back over there. And uh, so I call a guy. I, I was talking uh, in communication with some of the tanks below me. So I call, uh, you know, Apache 1-3. He was the call sign for this M1 Abrams tank. Um, you know, pretty formidable piece of combat equipment if you've ever seen one. Anyway, so I, I make this call and uh, I tell him what's going on and uh, at the end of it he says, we've taken care of it, no more problem. So I'm thinking, alright, cool, that's taken care of. So I've been avoiding death and as Laura said, you know, during her, uh, during, during her um, routine, you don't pay taxes while you're in a combat zone if you're uh, working, I guess, for the United States government. And so, for me, avoiding death and avoiding taxes were a really interesting, you know, flip side of the very same coin. You do them at the same time. So. <laughs>